We should aim to reduce toil via automation whenever possible. Today, I'm going to show you how to automate the creation of monitoring dashboards. This is the Stack Doctor. While dashboards are not a replacement for well-defined SLOs, alerting, or good observability, they're widely used by many involved in service reliability, and they're a must-have capability in any monitoring setup. The first question you should ask when setting up a dashboard is, what should be on the dashboard? Thankfully, the answer to that has been well documented in the Monitoring Distributed Systems chapter in the SRE book. If you have nothing else, start with the golden signals, traffic, errors, latency, and saturation. I'll go over each one. Let's take services running in GKE and managed by the Istio service mesh as an example. We've covered using Istio with cloud monitoring and the excellent telemetry it provides in the past. Today, we're going to focus on using some of the key metrics it provides about traffic, errors, and latency for our service. Here's an example dashboard showing all three. The first golden signal is traffic, essentially a measure of how much user activity the service is responding to. Thankfully, Istio provides this natively for every service in the mesh. The metric is called server request count. And the first chart in my dashboard, request rates by service, uses that metric and groups the results by the destination service name label. The next chart, errors by service, uses the same metric and grouping options. The only difference is that the data is then filtered to only count requests where the response code is not 200. Note that this is a rough approach as it does include 300 redirects and 400 errors, which are often the result of misconfigured or misbehaving clients. The last chart again uses an Istio metric. This time, it's server response latencies, grouped by destination service name and using the 99th percentile aggregation. I'm not filtering out errors for this one, though it might be a good idea if you want to better understand how long it takes to return errors and successes separately. Creating such a dashboard manually is not difficult, assuming that the data is available, but it is toil that should be automated if possible. With the release of the Dashboards API, it now is. You can also use the API to, for example, copy dashboards between workspaces to create additional standardization via automation. Let's take a look at how we can use the API to create this dashboard. The general idea is pretty straightforward. We simply call the projects dashboards create method, passing a dashboards object, which contains a name, description, and a set of widget objects that specify the charts themselves. Here's the JSON definition for the request rates chart. We'll put the links to the blog post where you can see the details below. I created this manually, but you can use the API Explorer to create your own baseline and simply populate it with parameters. Note that the filter specifies the resource and metric. This is also where you would specify, for example, the cluster name, service name, or other attributes if needed. I use the default aligner and the sum reducer to simply total up the requests and group them by the destination service name metric label. To create the dashboard itself, we specify it as a grid layout with the number of columns we want, and then define the charts as widgets. We then pass this in the body of the request to the API. And here we are. Our dashboard is created and ready to use. We're working on the features to make the API even more useful, including enabling through the gcloud command line. Also, contributors are discussing and planning the Terraform module for the monitoring dashboard API in GitHub. But you can and should get started with dashboard automation today. Thanks for watching. Come back next time. This is the Stack Doctor. Stay healthy out there.